G'day guys, Ziggy D here. I'm here again with Chris Wilson. Hey. Thank you very much for taking some more time to talk to me. You're welcome. I wanted to talk about this whole 10 axe system and get some divi d design, divine, divine design <laughs> insights into it. I'm just going to roll with that. I'm not, I'm not editing that out. <laughs> You're like those community guys with their memes. <laughs> <laughs> divine design insights with Chris Wilson. Mm. It's time. The whole 10 act system. Before this uh, 3.0 announcement, you were talking about identifying an issue in the action RPG mm -hmm. genre and uh, addressing that. How do you feel? What is that issue, firstly, and how do you feel like this 10 act system is addressing it? Traditionally, action RPGs like uh, Diablo 1 to Path of Exile, for example, have required that you play through the game several times before you reach whatever the end game is. It's essentially a trope now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's kind of the New Game Plus and New Game yeah. Plus Plus systems that are used in other types of games. And so, for a very long time, players are happy to have additional content to play, right? Like if Path of Exile finished at the end of normal, then um, there would be less of a game than if there was the ability to play through and see how your character fares against super hard versions of sand spitters from the beach. <laughs> and there's the problem. Okay. You're playing through stuff that's kind of designed to be early in the game. Yep. And there's a thing where people say, I want Cruel to be incredibly hard when you start off because you know, there used to be a difficulty jump. Well, the AI of the monsters is just laughably cheap, right? Like it's designed so that the sand spitter moves around and occasionally shoots you and the zombie kind of wanders around and you know, doesn't hit you because he's a zombie. You know, it's, <laughs> It's yeah. designed to be the beginning of the game, not halfway through the game. And so the problem that people found was it kind of just isn't really that fun to replay certain parts of this. You know, of course, there's the awesome bits like the dried lake. We're totally happy to get to the dried lake again and do some more farming. But a lot of the game really needed to be different if you're playing it a second time. And in addition, from a retention point of view, we know that when we get players into the Atlas, we own that player's soul, right? Like they're, they're, they're ours, they're ours basically. <laughs> their income's basically tithed to the company after that point, you know, we're, we're sorted out. And for the existing playthrough, at the beginning, we have no retention issues of people playing through the storyline. The story is compelling. And while some people don't finish the game for whatever reason, it's certainly not the same as when they're playing through the second and third difficulties, which were just a repeat. In fact, there's a point in the graph where you finish the first playthrough and you get to the second and you say, wait, what? I have to do this again. Mm -hmm. And some percentage of people leave. Now, despite this, the game grew in popularity and was very successful and that's all well and good, but it was certainly a leak. You know, it's a hole that we had to fix. And different games have tried to do this in different ways. As you know, Diablo 3 has adventure mode and they do not have multiple difficulty levels that you play through. They have a dynamic difficulty system where you can yeah. kind of tailor it to your character and they have some scaling and so on. Uh, we didn't want to do that. And so we have done the six acts in this release, which increased the game's uh, size to 10 acts before the end game. And this is the thing we were referring to a while ago when we said there's a problem with the a traditional action RPG tropes that we wanted to address. And the example we gave at the time was like the flask system where Diablo 2 has potions that you buy from the shop and it's a bit spammy having to buy them and they're kind of homogenous and similar. And so we went with flasks that refill, whereas other games have done different things like stacking potions or red balls that you have to run over on the ground or regen and so on. And so all the games handle it in different ways and this is our way to have a 10 act playthrough where the second five acts are entirely fan service where you revisit reminiscent stuff from the past and find out what happened to it. Do you think that particular decision will help with player retention, that you're returning but that it's a bit different this time around? Well, on one hand, it doesn't feel the same to play through as you've played through yourself. I mean, pretty much the, the moment that's most similar is, I guess, you're in like the mudflats, which is a visually similar zone the two times, apart from the new architecture, but the monsters are different. And pretty much everything else after that point has a very different tone to it, right? There's both the god hunting aspects of it, and there's the fact that you're going completely different paths. You're constantly in this playthrough, finding kind of blocked areas where, oh, I could go through the before, but what do I have to do now? And finding other ways around. But in addition, there's the fan service thing where if you enjoyed the story or even just the existence of the first half of the game, then the second half kind of answers all the questions. Where is Nessa? What do the town people say about her? Oh, she's looking for the Star of Rayclast. That's not going to go well for her. When will I see her again? You know, and there's Nessa throughout the act in various different places. Mm -hmm. And the idea of, you know, Chevron, who created Brutus, saying, oh, you, you made my, my guy go to pieces, so I'm going to put him back together and we're going to get you at the top of my tower. And this <laughs> kind of stuff, where you get to kind of hear about things in the first playthrough and then experience them in the second. And the, the lore of the uniques and so on is pl plays into, um, you know, situations that you get to encounter. And so we feel that it is much more than just six new acts from the point of view of it lets you actually like fulfill things that you've heard about in the past. So it's all well and good to say that, yeah, we're going to add six acts to bring it to 10 acts to mm -hmm. solve this problem of the action RPG genre. But right. 
How do you actually manage that? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. This yeah. is through our company's core DNA is about clever reuse of content, right? That's um, action RPGs, isn't right. it? Right. But we basically, when we sat down at the beginning, there were three of us, and we said the only way that we're going to make this using our you know meager life savings is to find clever ways to reuse content. You know, the level generation stuff has to be extreme. The items have to be incredibly deep. There has to be a lot of stuff without having to actually just mass make an entirely large scale game. Yeah. Now, since that point, we've sunk tens of millions of dollars into mass large scale games. So there is a lot of content there, but the immense amount of um, ways that you revisit it, like, you know, every tile set is used several different times throughout the game. And then there's map versions of it and there's arenas. And, you know, it's a, there's a Leo fight, you know, sorry, a, uh, vegan fighters and you know a certain tile set and so on there's so much reuse of stuff and this uh you know the leagues for example we make a league and then we get to use it as potentially a race and we get to use it as zana mod and sextants and map mods and legacy league all sorts of things and so when making these six acts we're already well we're making these five acts i should say because act five is entirely new content so the additional five acts here are a very clever remix of the existing stuff that we have where in some cases things that we uh, creative for Atlas of Worlds, we've also intended to be used here, so we get the ability to take a twist on an Atlas map. The beacon, for example, is an, is an example there. And so um, there are places where we get to double dip various uh, content that we've made for else, elsewhere in the game and use it in an interesting way here. But the mandate for the team has basically been do this in the most cost effective way, because if we apply everything we've learned over the last decade, then it is entirely possible for us to make five acts in the time that it would normally take to make one or two. And then over the last couple of years in parallel, we've been working on this and it's all coming together now. So how did you ensure then that this didn't just become what some people fear as like reskins of the previous acts and that it actually felt significantly right. different while taking advantage of that like skill of reusing things? So when we were initially planning this, I suspect we wanted it to be more of an, an initial reskin, right? The initial scope is the minimum amount required to make it so that it's interesting to play through the areas again. And the team have delivered so much more than that that it worries me. Like, <laughs> playing through, I am amazed on a daily basis at the subtlety of the stuff and how cool it is to, like, go into Act 2 and then back out again because of the fact that they worked out that the road is open and all this stuff. Yep. And that only gets more crazy as we get further down this. So the team have gone above and beyond the initial mandate, right? Like, we said... Okay, no new monsters, just, just take the existing ones and use them in different ways, a few reskins, and they've made new monsters, right? Like, there's, there's so much cool stuff that the team have put together for this um, to make sure that it does not feel repetitive. And there's kind of this feeling of fan service joy as you find out about all these cool things. And I got to experience that myself because I've been working internally on spearheading um, the China project and working on overseeing business stuff and keeping a close eye on the itemization and Path of Exile, but not the creation of acts. I actually got to kind of save myself from having seen Acts 5 through 10 and only get to check them out recently when they're in a really good state. Mm. So I got the same feeling nice. that you did a few days ago and the yeah. community did this week. <laughs> awesome. So Act 5, has that been designed with this dual part system in mind? Because all the other ones you've kind of adapted to mm -hmm. come back to and change yes. the storylines, but Act 5 has been made at the same time. Was yes. that like always the intention that you would have two parts of Act 5? Return yeah. Act 10? There is a specific plot reason why you have to go back to Rayclast and why you're doing all of the god slaying and why you're get working towards the point where you get to return to Oriath in Act 10 and finalize the fall of it. You know, there's, there's, there's plot stuff there that I don't want to spoil. And so when the team are designing Act 5, they're completely aware of the fact that there's also the 6 through 10 arc and it means that we get to save some of the most awesome and impressive stuff for Act 10. Ah, okay, so some of the stuff that you might have just put in Act 5 and kind of condensed it down, you've been able to spread out and bring out into a second version of Absolutely, it. and planning that from the start was a lot better than finishing Act 5 and then saying, let's do another 5 and having to go and retcon a thing that's already finished and released. Right. Like, you know, if we if we take the Beast fight from Act 4 and put it at the end of Act 10 and say, hey guys, you've already killed the Beast, but we're moving it by 6 acts, that'll be a problem. So we're not doing that, we're, we're doing it with new content. So what sort of, like, I know you don't want to spoil everything, but mm. what sort of story can players expect to get out of this whole 10-act system? There's an overarching story arc here that the players are gradually beginning to put together. And I say that by reading parts of different people's comments and assuming that there's one guy out there who's just reading those same parts and knows the entire story. <laughs> Most of the information is there. And you'll notice that over the last few leagues, there have been a lot of uniques piled into the game that deal with gods, right? There are items themed around the various gods like Tukahama and Aberath and so on. Mm. And if you're careful and read a lot of flavor text and listen to a lot of story stones and stuff, you can put together quite a lot of the story. And then there's subtle clues, right? There's a 
There's a symbol that's being used extensively throughout the game as of recently, which ties a lot of the stuff together. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy for people to gradually put it together. And we expect by the time they play it, they'll have their hopes. They'll have the hopes as to what they're going to see, and hopefully they'll be pleased with that. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Cheers.